Can a guy with no welding experience put a truss on an axle? Stick around and see how it goes. Welcome to this episode of Off-Road Hub. My name is Ken, thank you so much for watching. As I mentioned uh, in the open there, Today I'm going to be putting a truss on my Sterling 10 and a half inch rear axle. So the truss that I'm going to be putting on here today is from Artec and it's made for this axle. So it should only require a little bit of trimming. We'll see how much it takes to get it to fit nice and snug. And um, yeah, like I said, I've never uh, done this before, so don't uh, interpret this as a how-to video, more like a learn from my mistakes video. So anyways, I, I, hope, uh, I hope it goes well and uh, maybe have a little fun along the way. So the axle is fresh back from the sandblaster, so it is perfectly clean metal. Uh, I know it looks kind of gray, like maybe it's primer, but uh, this is perfectly clean metal. This was pretty rusty before. So I'm really happy with how the sandblasting turned out and I'm glad that I have this nice clean metal to weld on. So this truss comes unwelded from Artec and it's got these pieces that uh, across the axle here like so and then uh, on both sides and then those are held together by um, these <laughs> and, uh, and then that's all held together by this big piece that goes over the top of everything. So, um, first of all, I gotta get these pieces to line up on the axle, and we'll go from there. Alright guys, on this first piece, you can see I've got a pretty good gap right here. Almost a quarter inch uh, in some parts, like here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim this going this way so this whole piece can slide in a little further. So I'm going to trim here and here and uh, see how that goes. After some grinding, kind of everywhere, um, I've got my gaps down to a pretty manageable level, I think. I think that looks pretty good. So, on to the next one. Okay, on this one, you can see I've got a gap here, a gap here. So I'm going to start out by taking a little off here, a little off up here, and um, yeah, right here and here. And uh, we'll see, we'll see what that does. All right, I'm getting closer. Looks like I got a little contact up here, right there. And then, hmm. Yeah, we'll see what that does. Seems to be a little high centered right here. I'll probably just bevel that a little bit on the inside. All right, I think that uh, I think that's pretty good. Beveling this on the inside got this down lower, so this is good. It's kind of a gap right here, but I don't want to adjust the entire thing just for this spot. I'm not going to weld every inch of it anyways. So I've got good here and good here. So I think that'll probably work. So I'm finding that these truss, this well, this truss is kind of loosely in the shape of the axle, but there are definitely huge gaps. And so uh, I foresee a lot of, a lot of grinding. We've got huge, huge gaps over here. Um, yeah, 
definitely uh, not not an exact fit. It's just kind of loosely in the shape of the axle. Now I can clearly see that this breather in its stock position probably isn't going to work. So I got a little plug uh, with an Allen head on it. There we go. Problem solved. Now I can't really say that this is going particularly well. Um, I have man, I've managed to get it up here kind of put together, but there's a ton of gap between the top and the and these parts. So <laughs> um, I think I'm actually going to do this how I don't think it probably should be done. And that is just to put the truss together and then fit the whole thing to the axle. Because fitting piece by piece just doesn't seem to be working very well. Um, and none of the pieces are very close to fitting. So um, I'm going to try it that way. So I'm just going to tip this thing upside down and tack it together and see if I can fix fit fit it on the axle as a whole unit. Well, that doesn't look great. Um, <clears throat> it looks a little better on this side. Actually, it looks a lot better on this side. But, uh, definitely have some, some really large gaps here, which is really disappointing. Um, yeah, I'll have to see what I can do here. I may have uh, I may have ruined this truss. I don't know. I just don't know. We'll see what happens. All right. I uh, I think I've got it. I think my gaps are pretty good here. Pretty good here, good here. Obviously there's a couple of places that aren't going to get welded um, like that, um, but pretty good here. Everything's actually uh, looking pretty good. So this side's a little bit more questionable. I've got some kind of big gaps here, um, maybe an eighth of inch or a little bit less, but, and I'm, this is obviously too big of a gap to weld. But you know, um, you know, some trusses aren't even welded to the center section. So if there are a couple sections of this that I don't weld on, that's not too big a deal, I don't think, anyways. And Artec uh, just calls for stitch welding, anyways, not one big long continuous weld over the entire thing. So <clears throat> I mean, if there's a gap there and I don't weld in a couple different spots like here uh, I think that's I think that's gonna be just fine so I think we're good to go so what I'm gonna do now is that I have it set up perfectly on the axle the way that I want it I'm gonna tack it in a few more spots the truss and then pull the truss off the axle and finish welding up the truss and then set the truss back on there and then get to welding it to the axle
All right, guys. Well, I've got the truss all welded up. Um, now, I know that I'm not a good welder. So for those of you who are professional welders, and for those of you who welding is an art form, I realize that my welding is equivalent to finger painting, but um, considering that I've never really welded before, I think it went pretty well. I had a couple pretty rough welds, but uh, overall not bad. And I'm 100% confident that it's not gonna come apart. So, you see, I, I broke it up. I didn't weld all continuous. So I came back and forth, went back and forth because I didn't want to put too much heat in one spot at a time. I've got my little laser thermometer and I don't think anything ever got over 200 degrees. So, um, yeah, not, not, not the worst, not the best, but uh, it'll definitely hold. Yeah. All right, so welding to the tubes, I'm gonna preheat these tubes to Oh, probably about three, 350 degrees um, to get good welds on here. And because this will cool down faster than this thinner material. So it's just good to preheat it. I don't know all the science behind it, but I guess that's just a general practice. And then this center section, which is cast, um, I don't know if it's cast iron, but it's cast ductile or something like that. And I'm gonna preheat that uh, to at least 350 as well, probably closer to 500. And then I'm also gonna switch my wire when I weld onto the center section to a nickel 55 wire, which is supposed to be better uh, and more reliable for welding onto cast material, less likely to crack. So um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. The ambient temperature of the metal is 61, 63 over here. Um, it's pretty cool out here in the garage overnight, so that's a little bit concerning, but yeah, we'll do our best. substantial heat into that metal. We want to take this nice and slow uh, and not do too much at one time. I guess there's a big risk of uh, warping an axle. So it's gonna give this uh, a couple minutes to rest and then we'll hit it some more. nickel 55 wire in the gun ready to go for this cast portion uh, probably just gonna do a few a few lengths on each side of weld and uh, not not much actually but uh, we'll see how this how this wire works before we get started we got to heat this cast iron up pretty hot uh, at least 350 degrees so start by doing that
All right, it's super hot, and now I'm gonna heat it up one more time, get it super, super hot, and then I'm gonna wrap it up in some blankets. All right, I've got Sterling tucked in for the night, and uh, we'll come back in the morning to see if any of my welds have cracked. That won't happen though, right? See you in the morning. guys I got the truss on I wasn't hundred percent confident that it was gonna happen there for a little bit but but here it is and I'm pretty happy with the results um, this nickel wire that I used at the end for this cast welding it got a little bit globby uh, but it's okay it's just not not the prettiest welding uh, but I think it's strong and it didn't crack so I'm pretty happy about that it's actually still just just a little bit above room temperature um, so those blankets really did their job slowed down really cool it's been a solid eight hours so uh, i got to cool down nice and slowly um yeah for my first time out doing welding and putting something together like this I, i'm pretty happy with it i think it's going to be totally strong this truss this truss is not going anywhere that's 100 percent certain so that's what that's what really counts and um, i don't think i warped the axle or anything like that i took it nice and slow on the welds so i think i'm good to go um <laughs> so anyways thanks for coming along and um subscribe so i can see you every monday and thursday and we'll see you next time